Hi, look at this opening. It's a terrible opening. Everyone who passes by and sees this opening goes blah. And this opening, this one is even more awful how tight it is because of the chimney sticking out. It goes straight to our backyard. All the thieves and animals have a nice way back there if they can get over how terrible this opening is. Why did I leave it open like this? I've heard even some people turned into stone looking at this. It's so... I'm gonna make gates, okay? I'm making gates. That's what I'm doing today. I've never made a gate before. What? I'm an electrical engineer, so I can do anything. I can do surgery if I want to. The patients may not survive, but hey, it doesn't stop me. Let me talk to you a little bit about the design. See, there will be a post that the door will be hanging from, which goes somewhere around here, and the door opens out there. But see, these fences are a little bit flimsy because the posts are not going into the ground, but are mounted on some concrete. So you might say it might be better to connect the post on the wall of the house, which is quite stable. But the thing is that our wooden houses typically have this thin siding and then a thin plywood underneath. So I'm not really confident this siding can hold the weight of the door hanging from it. You might say shove the post into the ground right there with concrete and hold it tight. But I can't because there is plumbing running there. I guess I could put it on this side, but I realized I don't really need to. I think all I need to do is to screw the big post to this siding here. There is no way for the post going back and forth this way, this siding will hold it. But it might go back and forth like that. But I'm gonna tie it to the side of the house so it won't fall forward because the weight of the door will be pushing it this way, right? As long as there is something on top of this post, touching the side of the house, the house will hold it from falling forward. And I think on this side, the side of the chimney is quite strong, made of bricks and concrete. So I will probably screw the post onto this wall and use maybe some construction glue to make sure it's stuck strongly. Well, let's make it and then you'll see what I mean. So the first step is to go get all the lumber we need to make a gate. Look at all the wood I bought. Now I have to fit it in my Tesla. What? You think I shouldn't do this with my Tesla? Why did I buy it for then? All I need is some tarp to protect the Tesla. Then I just shove it all the way in. Eight foot fits nicely, seems like. There you go. Fits like a glove. And here's all the wood. Hopefully I didn't damage the car much. And of course, they're all cedar because they are much more weather resistant. And look how big and magnificent this thing is. We could make a giant cross and crucify somebody. <laughs> Too bad, today we are just making gates. Now, the frame on one side is seven foot, so I have to cut like one foot off of this thing. I don't have all the proper tools, but hey, I'm an electrical engineer, so I can do it. <laughs> eh, not deep enough. I cut from the other side. Stuck. Okay, now from this side. There you go. Not terrible. Yeah, yeah. This side will go under so we won't see it ever again. Also this one. There. You typically don't get this dirty doing electrical work though. The first thing I want to do though is that I want to put stain on all the woods that make the frame of the door because after I install them on the wall it will be much harder to paint it and not ruin the siding of the house. The stain not only gives it a very good color but also makes it much more weather resistant. So let's mix it. Oh my god. After rolling the stain on, it's not a bad idea to smooth it out with a brush. Nice. Now we let them dry and do a second coat all over. There we go, two coats. I know, by the way, I made that planter side panels and top seat too. The flowers are my wife's work. I just mow the lawn. I take good care of my lawn thanks to like this channel here that I forgot the name. Okay, now. This side is the trickiest side. See, this two x four goes here, and the two x four itself is curved outside, and I have to straighten it somehow. And the wall here has settled to an 
angle like this and if I put it on there this piece of 2x4 will be screwed onto the fence if I can hold it uh, down here and up there but there will be some gap between the 2x4 and the fence so I have to put some spacer wood between them okay first let's see where the 2x4 should go and of course oops I'll be using three and a half inches deck screws to make sure they don't corrode outside. One spacer wood and screw goes right here where I marked. Like this. Then I'll make sure the bottom side is also exactly where it should be. You know, this piece of wood have to be exactly parallel to the surface of the chimney or as close as possible. Then I'll put another spacer and screw right here. Solid. Now I put more screws to make it solid. Yeah, it's not gonna move. By the way, the end of these will be sitting on gravel and that's a good thing because there won't be any standing water and the water just goes down into the gravel. So the wood will not corrode over time, much at least. As you may be able to see, this piece of wood is curved outside. I have a simple solution for it. I'll shove another piece of wood behind this section here, which in return will push the stomach inside. Okay, how is it now? Damn, it worked better than I thought. Well, it's not super level, thanks to the fence and the wall and everything, but reasonable enough. As long as this is parallel to that, we should be fine. Especially I'll tie the top of them with another piece of wood that makes sure they keep the same distance. Even if the fence wants to fall over time, that piece of wood should keep it in place. And this is the piece of wood that will tie the top of them together. Like this. Did I cut it too short? I forgot. Damn it! I guess I'll cut another piece of wood. There we go. This post must go right here. Now I'll attach this post to the chimney brakes using some concrete screws. And also I'll use uh, construction glue to make it even stronger. Now I'll drill some wide holes around one and a half inches inside the wood because these screws need to penetrate deep inside the wood to get into the brake. I make four pairs of holes to hold the post. We hold this top beam to the post with a single screw. Oops. Don't fall. Make sure this is level by adjusting the height of the post. I can shove some gravel underneath. Well, it's quite off. Make sure the distance from top to bottom is the same. Now, without moving the post, we'll mark the wall for screws using our drill. Unscrew this again. Remove the post. Make deep enough holes in the brick. Put the post back. Add a ton of construction glue to the back. Now we flip this back on the wall where it should go. Which is hopefully around here. And put our concrete screws in. And this shall not move ever again. And then of course I'll use a ton of screws to tie these together. Perfect. Now this side is much easier. The post sits straight on the concrete block. That is enough to hold the weight of the post and the door. We just need to make sure it's level. Again, I'll make some deep white holes into the post so that these deck screws can go all the way into the other side. 
three holes for three screws each. Put the screws in a little bit first. I can even put the top beam between the fence and the wall to keep it straight. Make sure it's absolutely level and drill them in. Now this may look a little bit loose and flimsy, but that's okay. This top beam will hold it strong in place. Now, we just put a screw right at the center of this top beam and post. Make sure it's absolutely level and perpendicular to the wall. Then this must fit right under. I'll put some gravel underneath to make it fit perfectly. A screw to the center of that. Make sure this guy is exactly level. Drill into the siding and screw it in place. Well done. And I'll put three more screws. There we are. Hopefully the water won't get inside the siding so much. Per my calculations, it should be okay. There you go, solid. Of course, this is not load bearing. This will be bearing the load of the door and if it wants to lean again, the top beam will hold it to the wall. So the door opens out like this. Oh, actually, let's add some more screws to the tops here. And now to clean these holes and make them look better, I have these wooden dowels that I put some wood glue on. I put the dowel in and hammer it. Clean the excess glue. Cut the excess dowel, hammer it completely in. Clean it up and then I can put some more stain on it to make it more uniform. Just like this. I had to make the holes on this side a bit bigger because the screws were bigger. But lo and behold, I have the piece of wood that would exactly fit these holes. <laughs> Bunch of glue on this. Shove this in there. Cut the excess. Clean the mess. Done on both sides. Now all we have to do is to pray that the earth doesn't move to misalign all the frame. Earth will move. So those screws and these screws really don't do anything in terms of weight. See the post is not gonna move this way unless the entire fence slips like that, which is not possible. And the post won't move this way because it's held by that beam on the top. And it's not gonna move that way because the door weight is on this side pulling it this way. And the weight of the door and the post are sitting on the concrete down there. So really these screws are just holding the location of the post and are not load bearing at all. Those screws though are holding the weight of the post and the door. That's why there are stronger screws going into the brick wall. And I have used construction glue to glue this post to the brick wall. And this post through the beam on the top is holding the fence on this side so the fence won't move either. Now I'll be cutting these white boards. And we build and install some shelves. Irrelevant, what had to be done? Now... We put the door together. Let me show you what I'm gonna do. Basically, I'll be using a bunch of these fence panels and to hold them together, I'll have to make a frame behind it. And of course, I don't really need these vertical ones because the side panels pretty much do the same thing structurally. But I still thought it's beneficial to add them because they may prevent the whole door or the panels to warp under humidity or different temperatures. Now imagine the hinges are on this side and the door handle is here and the gravity is that way. What happens is that because these panels 
panels are not connected, the door will sag over time under gravity like this. The word sag in Farsi or Persian language means dog, which is completely irrelevant to the English meaning which means deforming or warping or curving under the pressure of gravity like this. Now of course there wouldn't be any sagging if we had used a solid piece of wood panel, but I like to do it this way because I think it looks better. You may say we can prevent it by double screwing each panel to this beam up here. But really over time as the door is heavy those screws are not gonna do much and it's still gonna sag a little bit. And even the wood at those double screws may crack. Well one thing if I understand it correctly is that the screws are not very strong against pull force. They may just pull out of the wood. But I believe they are stronger against shear force as in trying to break them sideways. So knowing that what do we have to do? We have to add a diagonal piece of wood like this to create triangles which are one of the strongest shapes in every structure. But knowing the hinges are here, is this the right way to put it? Remember all these panels are hanging from this top beam. So let's see what happens. If the hinge is here and the gravity pulls it down. See the diagonal wood is being stretched and these joints are relying on the screws to keep them together and the screws are being pulled out of the wood. They are good against that but not strong enough if the door is quite heavy and that's not something we want to rely on. But if we do it this way, if the door wants to sag it's wood pushing against wood which is quite strong and it's not putting any pressure on the screws. The only force these screws are under is a bit of shear force because this diagonal wood wants to slip that way. Which they should be able to easily handle especially if you put multiple of them. So as all these panels are hanging from this top beam, one side of the beam is held by the hinge and the other side the force of gravity is sent through the beam to this bottom beam which also being held by another hinge at the bottom. So this way it should be quite strong and not sag and that's what I'm gonna make. We measure the opening, I'll make the door around a centimeter or half an inch smaller so it fits well. Making some deep holes so the screws can reach the joint. One screw at each corner for now. Now we make sure it is square. Then we screw these panels on top at the right location. This will do. Now this is bullshit. See how close I came to the edge of the frame? Now I have to just cut a tiny piece of one inch wood to cover the rest. Let's add one extra panel. And now I'll cut it right at the edge there. Perfect. Maybe I should have been a carpenter. Look at this thin beauty. Carpenters hate him. Now it's time for the diagonal piece of wood. Knowing that that's the bottom of the door and the hinges go this way, that's how it goes. We just mark the corners. Cut the pieces. And of course it fits perfectly. Again, drill some deep holes for the screws. Screw it in place while pushing it down. And of course, we screw it on the other side too. Then we can go back and put the extra screw we didn't put in for the corners. Now inside the holes on the top side only, I insert my dowel pins because I don't want the rainwater to stand in those holes and possibly ruin the wood.
there. Now we just make another door just like this one. Oh wait, we also tied these wood panels to the diagonal piece too. There you go, two doors made. And now we stain the crap out of them. Two coats. <sighs> Done. But something I learned is that you don't stain under very hot sun because it will dry quickly before you have a chance to smooth it out and there will be roller and brush marks. Hopefully it won't look too bad after it dries, otherwise I would have to sand it a bit and restain. For now let's connect the hinges on the right side on the top and bottom beams and we can sand it later if need be. Make it exactly level and screw it on. I'd like to put one and a half inches from the door to the ground to keep some spacing there. Oh, I have to go to the other side. Keep equal spacing on both sides. One screw in, adjust the bottom, put the screw. Yeah, crap, how do I take this out now? Yeah, we can hammer it out later. It works. Not too bad, eh? Oh, it's hitting my plant a little bit. And the paint doesn't look too bad. I hope two hinges are enough to hold the weight of the door. I had bought a third one to put at the center, but eh, two should be enough. And now for the lock, I bought this type that this side typically goes on the door and goes like bing and locks in place. But for my door, unfortunately, I can't put this side on the door side. See, my door opens to the outside, which means if I put this on the door, it'll just get stuck to this frame here. The reason I designed my door to open to the outside is that I thought those hinges look pretty and would add to the look of the house. And I guess it also means if someone wants to get through here, they can just unscrew the hinges and remove the door. Yeah, these doors are not really made to stop anybody, if they are aggressive enough. Typically these doors are there for discouragement, so they might as well look good. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll screw this one on the frame side and this one on the door so that when the door closes, bing, it locks like this. One must just make sure that when they enter, they won't drag against this thing. And also when the door closes, there is a bit of distance between these two surfaces, so I have to add a piece of wood underneath it to bring it at the same surface. Looks nice. I don't think it needs repainting either. Beautiful. Now, how can I unlock this thing? I can't reach it. Oh wait, I can go from here. There you go. Maybe I should close this side so nobody can open it. Yeah, there was no door here to start with. We should be fine. Will we? 